What's up, everyone? Um, I'm going to do a quick video here on uh, this FLIR. No, no, what is it? The It's not a FLIR. It's the Seek Compact Pro thermal camera. And um, probably like a year or two ago, I, I bought the, the FLIR camera, you know, whatever, the FLIR 1 Pro or whatever it's called. And I ended up returning it because I just I figured that um, using free spray was just so much faster and so much easier, you know, and... And for some reason, I, I decided to buy one of these little Seat Compact Pros just just to give it a try again. And um, so anyways, <clears throat> I'm going to kind of give you the pros and cons of what I think about one of these things. First off, these things are about three to $400, I think. I think that's about what I paid for. I can't remember. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm getting a cold. I had, I've been recovering from cold for about a month now, man, and I'm still coughing. It's awful. Um... So, let's see, okay, so, you know, it's fairly simple to use. I have this little mount here, it's like a, you just kind of, uh, there's a clamp at the other end, and then, you know, it's just like a, it's an iPad holder, iPhone holder, or whatever, and then I just, I bought this little extension here. So, like, one of the big things is that it's, it's, these things are a little bit of a pain in the butt to, um, to kind of, like, mount. I mean, I've seen people custom make their little mounts and stuff like that, and then the other thing is, after you buy this, this little, camera here you have to buy this little um I'll show you uh, so it's like a little um I can't what is this even called it's just like a little it's a lens you know that um uh I guess uh, you know I'm not exactly sure what it is <laughs> but it's some stupid lens you have to buy it's another $40 um um, I, I guess, you know, it's just, it allows you to go a little closer or something like that so that you can actually see the logic board, you know, a little, from a, on, a, on, a, on a different scale. Otherwise, you might not be able to capture the, the tiny components on the, on, the, um, on the logic board. But anyways, I bought this from AliExpress. It's about $40 or so. You can, I think you can probably buy it from eBay. I'm not really sure, but I think, I think they're only shipping from China anyways. Um, if you're ambitious, you can, you can uh, 3D print this little, this little thing right here, which is basically this this red thing, and then um, I'm gonna return this thing. But um, so I ended up buying this too, which is uh, let's see. So I should probably know all this before I start creating this. Uh, before I started creating this video, but I can't remember what it was called. But basically, it's like a let's see, what is it called? ZNSE, ZN, uh, let's see if you can, can you see it? Zen, ZNSE 20 millimeter diameter, and I ended up buying 100 and, uh, 101 millimeter per inch, whatever the FL is called, because I, I believe, from what I understand, right? So this is just basically just a lens. It's kind of like your Barlow lens on the on your microscope, you know, like the 0.5x. It just gives you a, a bigger working distance. Okay, so I ended up buying this one, and so the 101 millimeter uh, lens generally gives you, I think, I think it's something like four to six inches or something like that from working distance. Whereas the lens that I bought from AliExpress, you know, you, you really have to hold it fairly close in order for it to see it, you know, which. Um, as you can see, it's it's just kind of like a little bit of a pain in the butt, man. I mean, I, maybe maybe other people have better setups, you know. But so what I ended up doing was I just I just kind of hold it like this and move it around. I find that's the easiest and just kind of like let this go. Um, so um, so anyways, you can buy this lens right here <clears throat> from Amazon, and it's the, the lens is like twenty some dollars. Um, I wish I can tell you exactly what it's called. <laughs> Anyways, and then you can 3D print this thing, pop it in here, pop it in, same thing, okay. Um, but, but I think the one that's on here is 50, 50 uh, millimeters per inch, uh, so the working distance is not as great, okay. Um, does it work without the lens? I think it probably does, uh, maybe not as well. Uh, but anyways, that's kind of what everybody recommended on the Facebook group, so that's that's what I just tried. So I was like, all right, let me just give this another try. And, and um... And, uh, so what I'm going to say is, is it worth it to like do, do a repair that has like a VDD main short or a VDD boost short? Um, probably not because, you know, your, your VDD boost, VDD main, you know, you, they're probably just, it's a cap, it's a common cap, you know, somewhat where the location is and, um, you know, you can just pop with free spray and you're done. You're done in like minutes, you know, <laughs> um, whereas, 
the seek, yes, it accomplishes the same task, right? But uh, it just takes longer, you know? I mean, you have to put it on this mount, you got to start it up, you got to, like, plug this thing in, you got to plug that thing in, you know? And, like, it's just like, gosh, free spray, you're done, you know? Um, so, so I guess comparison-wise, okay, it's, that's that's not that great, right? You know, to pay $400 for this device where you can accomplish something else um, a lot, you know, in, in a in a quicker amount of time, in a, yeah, quicker amount of time, and, um, you know, the cost is probably going to be a lot less, you know, um, the, the good thing is that you don't have to constantly buy free spray, you know, but free spray is not that expensive anyways. <clears throat> With that said, um, I will say that, um, I have solved some issues with this FLIR camera that I don't think I probably would have solved with free spray. You know, like I had an iPad 10.5 and I, I just didn't, you know, like I just checked all the common shorts and I just, I couldn't find it. So I just pl I put it under the seat compact pro and boom, you know, it just heats up so quickly. <laughs> uh, the cap heats up so quickly and it tells you exactly where fault is. And I was really pleasantly surprised, you know, I was like, oh man, that, you know, that, that was like a uh, probably $200 repair. So, I mean, you know, that, that pays for itself, right? Um, so anyways, so here's, so I, anyways, I have an iPhone 8 Plus here, okay, that has a VDD boost short, and the way that I determine that there's VDD boost short is, um, the first thing I always do is, before I even, like, disassemble it, I'll, um, uh, okay, in this case, what I did was I checked a battery connector, okay, so on the two, okay, uh, I should probably just show you guys, but let me see, let me see if I have a board here. All right, <clears throat> 8 Plus, um, first thing I did was, <clears throat> um, on the, the battery connector is missing here, but there's two I, I2C lines here. Um, they should read right around 0.74 or so volts in diode mode. So I measured those, measured the other one. The other one should be right around 0.4 volts. Uh, and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then um, I don't know. You have to go back to the older videos to <laughs> figure out what I'm talking about. Um, because one of the common problems with these... The 8 plus is basically like the transistor you know they pop off the transistor okay it wasn't the case in this point in, in this it wasn't the case on this logic board uh, because the two ic2 i2c lines measured fine next thing i always do is i just measure vdd main which basically if you just measure the um the second pin starting from the right on the bottom row here that is the that is one of the backlight anode pins and if you get usually if you get right around 0.2 volts uh, in diode mode then you have a short on VDD main. Okay, uh, the correct reading w is normally 0.53 um, or so. Okay, in this case it was like 0.51, which which is which is normal. Okay, so I knew that it wasn't a VDD main problem. So so the next thing I do is I always plug it into a DC power supply. Okay, because DC power supply tells me tells usually tells me two things. One is it consuming power immediately um, as soon as I plug it in. Um, and then is it consuming power, how much power is, it, power is it consuming after I boot it up? Okay, so in this case, I plugged it in, and I was getting, I was getting immediate amp draw, <clears throat> right around 0.8, okay, 0.8 amps, and that immediately tells me that this is a VDD boost short, I mean, just instantly, right, so that took all about five minutes to diagnose this problem, okay, so after that, I just disassembled the logic board, <clears throat> um, I brought up ZXW tools, which I will show you. All right, so I brought up ZXW tools, and uh, you know I know where Z VDD boost is, and uh, but usually it's one of these caps up here. Okay, so usually it's one of these five caps if it's a VDD boost short. And so I just this is on the back of the logic board. This is the PMIC. This is the audio IC. Um, so I immediately went to the back of the logic board, <clears throat> and that is where I'm going to target um, where the short is going to be. Now. Um, I just realized that you guys are looking at my legs here. That might be the first shot of my legs. Damn. Anyways. <clears throat> Enjoy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, um, okay, so where, where were we? Okay, so basically I just I plugged in my um, my power supply here uh, that connects to my DC power supply, and it has, you know, it's got a charge port and um, uh, a battery connector right here. And it's called like iPower or something like that. Um, but mine's a little loose, so I just I kind of have to hold it a little bit. And one one thing about these iPhone 8 and 8 Plus is that this little flap right here is metal, <laughs> and if you push there's a cap below it, and sometimes you push it, it'll um it'll zap and and like smoke and stuff like that. So I don't 
It's just a poor design. It's just an awful, awful design. Look, this is metal, right? There's a cap right there. So sometimes you're like pushing down on it, it'll short out. So what I normally do is I just cut it. It's just so stupid. Just a poor design. Anyways, um, I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know if you can see what I'm talking about right now, but there's a cap right there, there's a foil right there. And, and sometimes if you're doing something like what I'm doing, and pushing down on this uh, battery connector here, you accidentally push down on that flap and then it shorts it out. It starts smoking and stuff. Um, okay, so I'm going to show you what it looks like. Okay, so now now my eye power is off, and this is the back to logic board. You can kind of see it. And I have to hold it fairly close. Okay, see. Okay, now you can kind of see it, right? It's like, all right, it's bluish now. So now I'm going to turn it on, okay? And look, you can immediately see, without even doing anything, you see that little top, the one on the left side there? That is, okay, I'm going to turn it off, turn it back on. See it? That's like instantly tells me that, tells me where the short is. And now, if you go back to the ZXW tools, the only thing that's on this, this, this side here, so my logic board is turned the other way. Like, uh, let's see. So my logic board is turned this way. All right, this is the orientation right here, and you can see that this cap right here is shorted. All right, so let's see if our suspicions are correct or not. Um, so that's kind of like the great thing about this seek, you know. But listen, man, I would have figured that out in two seconds on the um, on free spray, right? Literally two seconds. Damn, good thing got away from my legs, my chubby legs. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I had like uh. I had like two soccer games. I'm like, I'm like, what am I like, 44 years old now, and, and we're still playing in this. So, we're playing in like old man's league now. It's over 35, over 35 soccer league, um, men's, and uh, we had a semifinal game. You know, we can still hang, right? I'm 40, like 10 years past 35, nine years, and um, anyways, just got beat up, and then we, we I play in a co-ed open league. Which is, uh, you know, the open is basically just like anybody over 18 or something like that. And man, they got some, they got these kids coming out of like high school or college. I don't know where they're coming out of, but they're freaking young and they're just like so fast, man. And, and maybe like 10, 15 years ago, I can hang with them. <coughs> uh, but these days, man, anyways, I got beat up. So if you're like staring at my legs and looking at the bruises, then you know that, um, I'll explain that those are the, from soccer. So anyways, not like you cared, but. Sometimes I read some of the comments, you know, see some of the comments, and they're like, oh, oh just get to the point, just get to the point. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You can say whatever you want. I don't care. All right. So, look. It's this gap right here, I believe. Um, let's go back to ZXW real quick. Yeah. It is that cap right there. So, if you look even... If you even look closely a little bit, right, you'll see that it's got a little, you see it? It's got like a little thing on it, and, and basically what happens with the, when the caps break is that they kind of like crack a little bit, you know, like, and this is just the crack, so, so, um, what I normally do is I just take an X-Acto knife, right, and I just kind of like, just go like that with it, that's it. Um... Usually you'll see it crack or something like that, and it's it's already cracked. You know that right there is a crack, so that's bad. <clears throat> so okay, so that's off. Um, all right, no more shots of my crotch and legs. Um, okay, so so let's just test it. Okay, let's just uh, red to ground, black to um, uh, each side of the cap right there, and then. So now we're getting 0.395 um, on BD to boost ma uh, power line, and I'm just going to go ahead and test, you can't really see what the fuck I'm doing, damn it, motherfucker. That's what happens when the camera is all jacked up. Okay, so basically, <clears throat> I just popped it on here, and then now I'm going to test the, ca the actual cap to make sure that it was shorted, although I think I lost my cap. Oh, here it is. Anyways. I mean, I already know the answer to this question. It is shorted, but let's just confirm. Okay, zero, yeah. So the cap is indeed shorted. So this this little mini thing right here, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you see it? Hold on a sec. All right, there. That right there is bad. I know it's blurry as bug. Looks like a booger. Anyways, that's a cap right there, and it's shorted. And that's the end of the story. Um, but, you know, the, the point was is not really about... 
finding a shorter cap on this uh, on this logic board here. It's about this this Seek the Seek Thermal Compact Thermal Pro thingy majiggy, you know, and it, w whether it's worth it or not. And and yeah, I mean, I I really do think that it is worth it. You know, um, you just kind of have to find. You know, especially for like data recovery or something like that, I think it's I think it's pretty worth it. Yeah, I mean because, um, you know, oftentimes with data recovery, it could you know water damage especially. Yeah, you, you just have no idea where the issue is. You know, and I mean it could be a resistor, it could be a cap. You know, um, you know if 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 there's no water damage, okay, most likely a cap, right? But if there is water damage, it could just be about anywhere. So so these things are yeah, I think they're worth it. You know, you know you, you you fix a few things that you otherwise probably would send back as as a no fix. Um, you know, you'll get, you'll get your money back in a heartbeat. So, <clears throat> so anyways, um, that's it. Um, just want to make a quick video about that, even though I just started rambling for a while. Um, I guess it's been a while since I've made a bunch of videos. Uh, I think mainly because, um, I haven't really fixed a lot of new things lately. Um, it's just the same old crap. Um, a lot of iPads coming in these days. Um, and... Um, haven't done a lot of 12s and 12s yet. I mean, no 13s. Um, and then, um, that's it really. I mean, just, it's been, it's been kind of cruise control for the past few months here. And, uh, now I have a, a nine, soon to be 10 month old. And that's been taking quite a bit of my time. So, um, anyways, I'll, I'll try to make a few more videos here. Um, now that things are a little bit slower, um, and, and, uh, I still don't really have much to talk about, but, um, anyways, thanks for watching. I just wanted to say thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We make these videos to help you guys learn how to do micro soldering, um, for normal repairs. Um, I want to take this time to promote our online course here. We created an online course hosted at Udemy.com. Um, if you go directly to Udemy, it's 150 bucks. If you go through microsoldering.com, click on store shop, and then click on this first uh, product right here, there's a coupon code that uh, gives you $50 off of our online course. So our online course, it was created by Tom and myself. Um, it contains four and a half to five hours of online video instruction. Um, it'll teach you everything that you need to know to get started with micro soldering. So basically, we um, we start with the basics, you know, just the component level, um, how to use ZXW tools, um, what kind of how to set up your tools, what kind of tools you need, um, how to set up your hot air rework stations, um, use your micro pencil and tweezers and DC power supply and all that stuff. And then we go into actual repairs. So the four most common problems are no backlight, no touch, no charge, and loop disease. And with the newer versions of the iPhones, um, we also have a section on uh, logic board separation because with the 10 and up, uh, the logic boards come in two pieces. So we also have a section on how to separate them and put them back together. And then our last section is um, all about data recovery. So this is, it's it's four and a half hours of just good stuff just to help you get started, okay? And with the way that cell phone repair is going these days, I think it's um, essential to learn how to do micro soldering for your business. Um, if you're interested, like I said, just go to the website here, microsoldering.com, and click on uh, store shop, and then click on this right here, and you'll get fifty dollars off. So thank you for watching our channel, and hopefully you'll enjoy the course. Thank you.